Okay, so in this video, I want to give a quick uh, walkthrough of how to use the coursework checker for uh, checking your Computing 2 assignment. Um, and I'm doing this on, I'm actually doing it on the virtual Windows desktop. So this will work on a cluster or it'll work on a Windows PC. If you're on a Mac, um, there's a very similar uh, video that Dr. Barker made that it's also uh, linked to on the Minerva page. So the very first thing you need to go and do is to get your code file that you're going to be submitting, the .py file, um, and also your data file, which should be an assessment mode data file, and put them together in some folder on your computer. And you need to make sure that your um, code file is called uh, your username .py. So my username is phygbu, uh, yours will be py20 or uh, py21 something, 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 or maybe an LL20 or an ED20 or something like that. So you just call your code uh, whatever .py. Remember, if you've written your code on a Jupyter Notebook, it's not good enough to just simply rename the extension of the file. In the Jupyter Notebook, you need to do a file download as um, .py file, and then that will let you um, get hold of the, the raw Python file. OK, so assuming you've done that and you've got your, your code file and your data file in a folder together, then the next thing we need to do is get hold of the coursework checker script. So that's uh, on Minerva um, inside a folder, uh, inside the semester two uh, coursework folder. Uh, there's a page that says coursework checker. It's got some instructions. It's got the video uh, of Dr. Barker using it on a Mac. It will have this video as well. Um, and you go to the coursework checker.py at the top and you just do download original file. So that will then should download uh, hopefully to your downloads folder. Um, so I find it here and then I'm just going to move it into the same file as um, I've got my my code and my data file. So I've got the three files then sitting in the same the same folder. So then the next thing to go and do is to go and uh, actually run the coursework code. So to go and do that, you want to go to the Anaconda Navigator, so the thing that looks like this. Um, and you've got two options um, if you're on a PC. You can either use Spider um, or you can use the command prompt. And I'm going to show you how to use the command prompt because this is basically going to work the same if you're, or nearly the same if you're on a Mac or a, or a uh, Windows PC. So um, on the PC, the thing you're looking for is called uh, command cmd.exe or alternatively PowerShell prompt probably would also do the same thing. Uh, it'll depend on exactly which version of Anaconda you've got installed as to which of these are available, but you're looking for one of those two. Um, so I'm going to go and launch that. Um, and that will, um, in a second, bring up a command prompt window. OK, so using the command prompt can be a bit intimidating if you're not familiar with it. Um, but there's a very simple sequence of commands we need to go and do. So the things you're looking for, and this will be the same if you're on a Mac, is you're looking for it to have in brackets base, uh, close brackets, um, at the start of the line. And then the next part of the line is the uh, folder or the directory it currently thinks you're in. And by default, it's probably going to be um, something like C users and then your username on a uh, PC, and it'll probably be something like um, <clears throat> uh, slash users, your username on a Mac, or something similar to that. So the first thing we need to go and do is we need to go and tell it to go and change directory to the uh, folder where we've kept all our data files. So if we go and find, okay, we don't need our downloads, we need the folder where we've uh, put those uh, files together. Um, and all you can do is just in the address bar, highlight it like this, do control C uh, to copy it. Uh, if you're on a Mac, have a look at Dr. Barker's video. He does basically the same operations. And in the prompt, you try CD, that's change directory. So CD space, um, and then you can right click and it will put in the thing you've just copied, or you can just type it in like that. Now, um, if that's a different directory, sorry, a different drive. So if the first, this drive letter, the letter before the colon is different than the one you're currently in, 
then you're also going to have to tell um, the command prompt you want to change uh, drive. And so to do that, you just type in the letter that was at the start of your uh, path there. Probably most of the time you'll find that this is always just C and it just works. Um, but if you have, if it is on a different drive letter, then just put the drive letter colon, press return, and now you see it'll tell me as I'm in M computing two. Okay, so I want to get to the point where the the prompt here is the same as the folder where I put those files, and I can check that's correct. Um, so if I type, um, oops, if I type ls on the Mac or ls if you're a PowerShell or directory dir if you're on a in the in the CMD prompt, then it will show you that you've got a set of files here which match the things in your folder. Okay, so then the next thing we want to go and do is we want to actually start up Python. And the way we're going to start up Python is we're going to type I Python. Um, so I Python is the um, extra enhanced Python command prompt, like what you have in Spider, um, if you're using Spider. <clears throat> anyway, so you type I Python, and then we're going to type for coursework checker. And I just have to type the first few letters and hit tab, and it will auto expand it to courseworkchecker.py. If you're on a Mac, that's going to be case sensitive as well. So you need to get your capital C right, but it should otherwise work. So that's all I have to do, and then just hit return, and it's going to start running uh, Python and then running the uh, coursework checker. Um, now, the first thing it does is it goes and tells you that um, it's had this warning um, about the IMP module. That's OK. Just ignore it. Um, if it's the first time you've run um, IPython and first time you run the coursework checker, this stage can be quite slow. So you might have to wait a minute or two while it um, uh, gets everything ready for you. Uh, what it's actually doing is it's downloading um, uh, the actual main coursework checking code uh, off the internet. And it's also compiling a whole bits and pieces of, of Python in the background there while, while it's being slow. So anyway, it'll come up and it'll say, um, uh, now it's going to ask you to enter your ISS ID. That's your username. Um, so in my case, that's P-H-Y-G-B-U. Um, and I'm going to put that in and that's telling it what Python file, what .py file it's going to try and run with. So I put that in and that tells me it's importing the code um, and it's told me it's finished importing the code and now it asks me for the name of the data file. Um, and so you can just type in the name of the uh, data file you've used. So it'll be something like assessment underscore data underscore your username dot that. Um, uh, and actually if it is just exactly that, then you can just hit return at this point because it will use the thing that's in square brackets. So because it says in square brackets, it says assessment underscore data underscore 5GBU dot that, that's the file it's going to use. So I can just hit return. And now what it's doing is having you go running my code for me. Um, so how long you have to wait for this to happen depends on how efficient your code is, of course. Um, so you see it flashed up briefly a couple of windows. Um, and now it's opened a web browser with this page. And this is the results of running the code through your coursework checker. So um, it tries to give you some uh, narrative as to what's happened. So the first thing it does is it goes and checks to make sure that it thinks you're using the correct version of Python. So in this case, it tells me, yes, I'm using Python 3.9 and that's OK. That's what it's looking for. Um, and then it's checking that um, the, the matplotlib is configured correctly. If you're running this in IPython, then this is almost certainly going to be right. If you run the coursework checker script in Spider, it might pop, pop up a warning about your plots being in line. Um, if that happens, what you should do is you should look at the video tutorial in the general administration section about setting up Spider, and you should uh, follow the instructions there for changing the plotting backend from inline to automatic. <clears throat> okay, and then it says it's found your source code. So if this line fails, if it doesn't find your source code, then it means that the username you typed in is not the same as the username that your code is called. So in other words, 
because mine is PHYGBU, I typed in my username as PHYGBU, um, and it all worked. Uh, so then it goes and has a quick look at my file and tries to spot for any problematic uh, things going on. So it tells me what functions it's found in my file. Um, it um, checks that the process data function uh, looks correct, that it looks like it can call it in the way it was expecting. Um, so if you've edited your process data, you've missed it out or something like that, then this is going to tell you, no, that's not good. You have to go and make sure you've got the right process data. Um, and that it takes a single file argument called file name, so it checks for that. Um, and then it does a couple of other checks. It looks for uh, trying to use the um, input function. It looks for trying to use breakpoint function. These are both things that would cause the autograder to fall over. Um, and it also uh, checks for any unused functions your code to warn you if it thinks that you've written the function and then, then never actually call it. So having done that, it then tries to actually import your code. So up until now, it's not imported your code. It's just tried looking at the file to see what's there. Um, and if all's well, then it will simply go from importing your code to saying it's finished importing your code and there'll be no lines of printout. If you've got lines of printout here, it means your code is busy off trying to do something as soon as I've imported it. And that's probably not what you wanted it to go and do. Um, OK, so then just double checks the function definitions again, make sure they're all OK. Um, and then it's ready to uh, check that your it's found your data file. So it looks for the file you told it to was your name of your data file, and it just checks to make sure that it's in the same format that it's expecting uh, the file formats to be, because you're not allowed to go and change the file format, um, otherwise it won't work with the, the second reference code. And assuming that's all fine, it just confirms it's found numerical data and it confirms it's found any uh, metadata keys that the autograder needs to have there. And once it's done all that, it then has a go at running your code. Um, and it goes and looks at the figures that your code has created um, and it, it saves a copy of them. So these figures here are the ones my code generated. You'll recognize them from the sample report. Um, and in your case, your figures should hopefully look rather similar. Um, but this is an opportunity to make sure that your figures that the autograder is going to capture are in fact the figures that you think they're going to be and they're going to be the ones you're going to use in your sample report. And then the final section is it looks at what happened in terms of the return value. So it looks for that dictionary of values and it checks through all the keys and it's not checking to make sure the answers are correct. It's just checking to make sure that they do actually look like they're a floating point number. And so you should see it say that um, everything you're expecting um, you've given an answer for should come back saying it looks OK. If you've not given answers for some of the parameters, then it'll tell you that they return none and just say, I you know, hope you were expecting that this wasn't an answer. Um, and then we get to the end. If it's passed all the checks, it says, yes, everything is good. Um, we don't know whether your code's going to actually find the right answers, but at least it's going to run in the autograder. And so you've got some confidence that, that that's all going to work correctly for you. Um, and that's really all there is to it. If you see problems um, uh, in, uh, in the results, then it gives you a hint to go back and what to go and look for, to go and try and change. Um, and if you need to go and refer back to these files, then um, they're inside the, um, the, the original folder uh, where we put all the data files there. It comes up as a coursework uh, uh, underscore checker dot HTML. Um, uh, and um, then you can you can look at it or you can post a question about the feedback on the forum uh, if you're not sure what it means. Uh, and that's all there is to it.